Welcome to episode 56 of Pink's Picks, recommendations from a sort of retired English teacher. Before I discuss today's title, I'd like to address reading, particularly in reference to a question I was recently asked by a friend who follows Pink's Picks on Facebook. He asks, do you actually read all of the books that you review? The answer is an in controvertible yes. In fact, I've read more. Since I started Pink's Picks in April of 2020, and especially since I've returned to the classroom temporarily this past se September, there have been several titles that I have read and taught but have yet to discuss on this channel. One of those, which I am currently teaching and the students love, yay, is Tim O'Brien's dramatic metafictional in the Lake of the Woods, which is one of those rare pieces in my reading repertoire set in Minnesota. Ironically, today's pick, William Kent Kruger's Bildungsroman novel, Ordinary Grace, is set in Minnesota as well. When I read Kruger's This Tender Land, I doubted that I could love another of his works the way that I did that one. I was decidedly and gloriously wrong. It is infrequent indeed when every single reader in a book club worships, if you'll pardon the pun, a piece, but praise this one, they did. Further, fellow author, talent, and contemporary Dennis Lehane writes that Ordinary Grace is a pitch-perfect, wonderfully evocative examination of violent loss. He furthers, I loved this book. Why is this Edgar Award winner and New York Times bestseller so popular? Well, speaking for myself, I love Kruger's structure from his epigraph from 17th century philosopher Blaise Pascal's The Heart Has Reasons That Reason Does Not Understand. Through his relatively brief 39 chapters to his exceptionally satisfying epilogue or denouement, you become so invested in Kruger's characters that you really want to know what happens to each of them. And though the author's imagery, diction, syntax, foreshadowing, and cultural references and allusions are absolutely stellar, his characterization is intoxicating. The story begins with protagonist Frank Drum reflecting 40 years later on the summer of 1961, which began with the death of a child, a boy with golden hair and thick glasses, killed on the railroad tracks, sliced into pieces by a thousand tons of steel speeding across the prairie. Bobby Cole's death is the first, but sadly not the last, that season. Frank, a 13-year-old looking for adventure, discovers more than he bargained for and definitely more than his adolescent mind can process. From Frank's family to his neighbors, friends, town founding fathers, police officers, every single one of Kruger's characters is beautifully drawn. My favorite, however, is Frank's father, let me tell you, if Atticus Finch is my fictional boyfriend, Nathan Drum is next in line. Nathan, who was the first Drum to go to college after escaping an abusive family, graduated from law school, but shipped out to serve in World War II before he had the chance to become a practicing attorney. The war changed him dramatically. Afterwards, he had no desire to fight battles in a courtroom. So, he went to seminary. When we meet him, he's serving three 
separate small town congregation, thus preaches every Sunday at 8, 10, and 12. A man of ideas, he never tries overpowering rhetoric or dramatics to muscle people into believing. His sermons, even following an unfathomable personal tragedy, are admirably pragmatic, thought-provoking, and moving. He treats his wife reverently and, like Atticus, honors his children by speaking to them as the compassionate adults he's grooming them to be. Further, Nathan is good-looking, well-liked, and he quotes Aeschylus for crying out aloud, I love him and this book. I give it an A plus. Next time, I will be discussing the girl with the louding voice. Until then, make good choices and do your homework. Bye-bye.